Welcome to AP Chemistry with Dr. Leggett Allen High School. I know you may not be at Allen High School, but that's where we will be working on your homework in this flipped classroom approach. Now, what we're going to be focusing on in this unit, the third chapter of my notes, is what I call the heart of chemistry. And it is certainly the heart of chemistry in terms of our calculations. And we're going to be looking at the mole and various ways to get to the mole or to move away from the mole as we perform a variety of calculations. Now I have a summary chart here that I think will be helpful for us as we review some of the ways that we already know involve the mole from our previous unit, the tools of the trade, as well as from hopefully pre-AP and general chemistry. So I'm going to start in the upper right here. Last unit we discussed molarity. And we can use the molarity both as a formula and as a conversion factor. We can say X number of moles is equal to one liter and we'll have our conversion factor. And this just gives you a visual of the volumetric flask. You probably can't see those words, but you should recognize the shape of that as a volumetric flask. Now, the more common way or probably most common way we'll use uh, this chart in getting to moles is via mass. And you will hear me say this so many times, you'll probably get very sick of the phrase, but mass to moles use molar mass. And for the molar mass, we use the periodic table and we simply add up the contribution from each of the individual elements. Now, another way, although we won't be using it quite as much this time, is to go via molality. That too can be used in either a formula way where we had moles per kilogram of solvent, or we could use that as a conversion factor. Not as often used, but we can still do that. We can go from percent composition, we'll find. And when you did empirical formulation or empirical formulas, we did that quite a bit. And so we'll see that towards the end of this chapter where we'll use the percent composition more of a particular compound or molecule than anything. But we can also use percent composition in terms of a solution. So we'll use it as a solution composition as well as what we showed last unit on the molecular or compound level. Now this gas tank here, I hope, gives you an indication. There's your little gas regulator and we have it strapped safely there. I wish we could use more of these in our class. We can get to the mold two ways here. We have good old Pevenert and the various forms of Pevenert and we will see this this unit. That's why I teach it early in that tools of a trait because it comes up in the conversation so early. And there's a lovely little one that we can use if you're talking about a gas at standard temperature and pressure, it has to be a gas at zero degrees Celsius, which is equal to 273 Kelvin. And we need to be at the equivalent of one atmosphere in terms of pressure. And when that's true, we can use the molar volume. 22.4 liters is equal to one mole. You have to be a little careful with this one. Students like to use it for phases other than gases, but we can't do that. Now we can go moles to a count of atoms. And when we are counting, we use Avogadro's number. I like to call them sometimes count Avogadro's. So if we use count as if we're counting molecules, atoms, formula units, Avogadro's number can help. And many of you remember that as 6.02 or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of anything is equal to one mole. That's our Avogadro's number. And we will use that as a conversion factor. Similarly, we can go to molecules or formula units if we're talking ionic, again, with count Avogadro's number because we're counting. These are uh, things that we count one, two, three, four, all the way up to 10 to too many to count, right? We'll use Avogadro's number there. And this last one stands for elements within. So 
we have elements within this substance here, or we've actually already seen ions within a formula. So when we're talking about elements within a formula unit, or elements within a molecule, ions within a formula unit, what we're going to be using are subscripts. Now this map should hopefully give you a layout of the land that we're going to be exploring in this unit. So let's move forward and see what some of our first calculations are. It's first going to start with running right through the heart of chemistry. So we have a chunk of sodium metal. Sadly, we are not allowed to buy that. If you're careful with it, it's not so dangerous and violent, but that's not something our school really likes to have us purchase. And we have 50.4 grams of sodium used, and it asks us how many moles. So if you like to go ahead and write that out, we have 50.4 grams is equal to question mark moles. Now, sometimes you don't have time for that on an AP test, so you want to at least circle the key important factors. And mass to moles use molar mass. And we're going to use our molar mass from our periodic table here. Now, when you do this, I just ask that you use two decimal places for the molar mass. That's usually sufficient to achieve the number of sig figs and the accuracy in our value that we need. It's a good idea to label because if we switch substances, you don't want to be missing out on a step. Now, we want to eliminate grams, so we're going to put grams in the denominator. We want moles, and for every one mole of sodium, we have a mass of 22.99 grams from the periodic table. So double check that your units cancel and you have them set up. And if you are forgetting a little bit about dimensional analysis, you can look online at Vimeo or YouTube. And if you look at the latest pre-AP videos, sorry about that, pre-AP videos, uh, there's quite a few on dimensional analysis. And you can get a nice review of the technique of dimensional analysis. Now, if I perform that mathematics, I get 2.19 moles of sodium. So that's an introduction to this. Now, you certainly could have done this in a formula fashion as we did last unit. Last unit, I was trying to focus on using formulas. So molar mass would have been mass over moles. And you know the molar mass, you know the mass, you could have solved for moles. But right now, in this section, I'm trying to move us towards implementing that as a conversion factor. Now, let's take a look at this next one. We've got 0 0.250 grams of Ritalin, commonly used to treat ADD, and there's the chemical formula. Now, if we want to go from moles to mass, we need the molar mass of this substance. And just as a quick refresher, I have 14 carbons. I'm going to take our molar masses to two decimal places. I have 19 hydrogens times 1.01. .01. Please don't round here. We're going to come to some problems where if you round too much, it can really throw off your process and make it much more complicated than it needs to be. So if we add all those up from the periodic table, we will get our molar mass for our Ritalin, and we'll have 0 0.250 grams times, now I'm going to set it up the other way for those of you who like that a little bit better. This way shows the mathematics a little bit, and we want to get rid of grams. We want moles for every one mole. That, if we added all that up above, we'd have 233.34 grams. Again, make sure your units cancel. They're in the numerator and the denominator, and when units are opposing like that, they'll cancel. And we get 1.07 to 3 sig figs times 10 to the minus 3 moles 
of Ritalin. So hopefully that's giving you a brief introduction to mastimals. We'll keep repeating this concept throughout the chapter, and so we'll definitely get much more practice on that. And in the next unit, we will do a refresher on using Avogadro's number in our calculations.